We got ourselves more Tower of God content for Mr. Sorry, Dr. Bonehead. And he says the anime ruined Bomb X and Dorsey. I hear that and Dorsey adaptation of the anime was quite lackluster from Webtoon readers. Let's see exactly what went down. Endorsey and Bomb, two fan favorite characters. I mean, who doesn't like Endorsey, right? She's so many. I like Endorsey. I like Hwadian more, though. People's best girl, and of course, Bomb is the main character. They, they have so much potential, so much character, and in season one, they're great characters. Going forward, of course, they'll be great characters. They're awesome. Who, who doesn't like them, right? Well, if you're an anime. I really did appreciate Endorsey looking out for Bomb and saying, like, Stuff to Rachel, stuff like, you know, I really hope whatever you're chasing at the top of the tower is better than Bomb, right? I, I really loved all those moments where Endorsey was kind of playing defense for Bomb and trying to make Bomb realize that Rachel doesn't want you. Like, why are you doing this? But ultimately, she ended up getting, quote unquote, rejected in the anime. Only you may not have known that Bomb and Dorsey are actually really good friends. They're actually quite close. Okay. Now, of course, there's a lot of people who ship these two. Bomb X and Dorsey is probably one of the most common ships, but we're just going to be talking about Bomb Blue Turtle. That's my ship. About their friendship for today and how the anime sort of uh, forgot about it. And, and it's it's really sad. In the webtoon, Bomb and Endorsey first meet at the crown game. They don't have that much of an interaction, but Endorsey shows up and the things happen. You know what happens. But didn't Endorsey say something like, is it fine if I kill all of them? And then the cameraman zoomed into Bomb and then Rachel said yes, right? Now, I know Endorsey didn't mean I want to kill Bomb, but it's just kind of funny how it all started like that at the crown games. Then, of course, Bomb is the one who convinces Endorsey to sign the friends list of Hots and Shibisu. And Did we convince? I thought we bribed her with a special deluxe lunch set, right? And, and she basically joins the group from there. Bomb basically uh, convinces her to join through yeah, food and it's diet. this funny scene yeah. and everything. It's comical, you know, but there's not that much of a connection. But actually in the webtoon, Hots isn't- My god, and Dorsey's forehead, bro. Some of the Endorsey scenes in the webtoon just makes her just look so bad. I don't know. I don't like Endorsey ponytail. When she has, when she flicks her bangs up in ponytail, that's like her worst hairstyle. I'ma die on this hill, man. Action, but actually in the webtoon, Hots isn't present with Bomb, which is, you know, it's fine, but because Hots is the one who's, you know, it's his friends list, so it does make sense for him to be there. But in the original, it's actually just Bomb and Endorsey who have that connection right away, which is pretty interesting. But their friendship starts to get even more real once the hide and seek test starts. And of course, the whole thing with uh, mm. the fisherman happens and Bomb is trying to convince her not to do this and they have this conversation about Rachel it's really emotional really impactful and I feel like the anime handled this pretty well although the webtoon there's definitely more to it and there's this this is funny Let's scene where Bomb leaves and then Shunwa and Ryan who and Dorsey is beating up on they say yeah she got dumped when this is the moment I'm talking about it didn't happen in the anime my bad it happened in the webtoon right and you said this too and I was like damn that sucks man and like ugh. Rejecting a princess is a hot like Endorsey for Rachel is the biggest L. That's why Bomb is in Rachel tier in the tier list. That Bomb dumped her. There's, they clearly have more of a friendship and even potential romance, um, at least from Endorsey's side. So there's a lot going on there. But then the anime completely drops the ball because here, from here on out, everything that I'm going to talk about only happens in the webtoon. So okay. after the hide and seek test, when they are preparing for the last examination, Bomb has revealed that he's an irregular. Of course, and Dorsey is one of the people who wants to be with Bomb, but she actually trains Bomb. And there's this really, these really great scenes. That again, this is Endorsey's worst hairstyle. I'm I'm a die on this hill. I don't like this hairstyle from Endorsey. It's where they're training together. And at first Endorsey's just completely, you know, beating up on Bomb, but it's really sweet because she's always offering him her hand, like to get up. And she's okay. so sundry. I mean When how old is this video? Four years. I, I hope if he starts making Tower of God season two videos, I hope he doesn't say Sundays. It's Sun Deer, man. Come on, if you, if you gotta try to pronounce the most popular archetype of an anime girl type, give us some respect, man. It's Sun Deer, man. She's, she's like looking away and she's like, all right, I'll help you up. It's great. It's, it's great character development for Endorsey because we've always thought of her as this ruthless person who doesn't mm. really care about, you know, like... In the beginning, she did seem like a... I'm not gonna lie. She's a total bitch. Absolute narcissistic 
sinful woman by her own words, not mine. But again, she comes from that kill or be killed uh, environment. And that's the only way that she knew how to live. And she changes later for the better. She She's not like terrible, but she she's out for herself. Yeah. But this shows you that she actually cares about other people. Some great scenes. But the best scene is during the last examination when Ren tells Endorsey to kill a knock. And right before she's about to do it, Bomb the lonely, don't you feel lonely, right? This is the moment that we talked about in the other video where we watched them, where that lesson of like, aren't you lonely? That discussion with Bomb is what makes her open up and, you know, side with Anak at that moment. She has this flashback to herself and Bomb training. And of course, I forgot to mention that Bomb actually does sort of impress her, but that doesn't really matter. They have oh. this conversation through flashback form about loneliness and Baum explains why Rachel's so important to him and, and Dorsey says that she likes to be alone. But then Baum sort wolf. of wakes her up to the idea because he says, but if you're by yourself, don't you feel lonely? Hmm. And like, it sounds like the same thing, right? I like being alone, but don't you feel lonely? But it's so impactful because Dorsey's like, you're kind of right, right? Like there's more to it than just, I like being alone. Baum is Maybe. like, I've been alone and it's not fun. Like you don't want that. It's this amazing scene. I'm gonna I'm just stop this here for now and bring an attention to a separate frame about loneliness that I truly resonate with. It's completely off topic. It has to do with the show called Hajime no Ippo and I haven't read it, but there is an amazing scene here. It's random manga snippets. Let's see if we can zoom in on it. Completely random tangent, but basically the conversation here, I, I think that this guy on the left is like some super giga, like think of the character on the right to be bomb and the person on the left to be in Dorsey. And he says, aren't you lonely? Um, I mean, you're in a position, sorry, let me just make this. You're in a position no one else understands and you don't seem to want to be understood. And then, and Dorsey says, Everybody starts out as a nobody. That means you and me both started from the same spot. Something got us moving forward, then we were off. A flat road with nothing on it. Then a sudden sleep, a steep incline. Hold on, let me get this. Eventually it becomes a mountain. Climb over obstacles, pushing everyone out of the way until you can see the top. There's only enough footing for one person up there. When the last obstacle is gone, there you are. You get a view that only others who have made it this far can see. And everyone is trying to make their way up to see it. Don't call a place we all aim for some shit like lonely. Call it extraordinary. Now there's different lessons, right? I think that Bomb and Tower of God, like, of course he makes sense. It's like, don't try to do everything alone, right? You, you know, don't try to do everything by yourself. You can have friends, you can reach out, we can climb together. But then there's also this other mindset which really compels me of a guy who is on his grind solo and everyone thinks that he's crazy and he's misunderstood and everyone thinks that he's lonely but then he reminds him the pursuit of extraordinary itself is not lonely it's extraordinary but completely random topic let's go back to the video and he basically explains why people matter like, it's not just about you, and you know, and it's the first time, well, one of the first times, that Endorsey really shines and breaks against her previous character, because the Endorsey that we first meet would kill a knock without hesitation. Yeah. But because she, th if it would further her own wants, but because she, uh, she had that flashback and that conversation with Bomb, she realizes that the people around her matter, right? And so she doesn't Even kill Shibisu. a knock. She chooses to go up the tower with a knock, and it's a fantastic scene. It's amazing. And then the anime skipped it. Completely destroying Endorsey's character. Not completely, but having that recall to Bomb would have gave Endorsey more of a reason to like open up to Anak. Where in the anime, I guess it just kind of happened. And I was like, oh cool, Anak and Endorsey sibling ship, right? Sisterhood, let's fucking go. But having it relate back to Bomb would have been a little bit more, I guess, more complex and deep and meaningful.
amazing. And then when Yuri shows up, Yuri actually asks Endorsey if she thinks that Bomb will pass the test, and Endorsey believes in Bomb, and of course there's this funny joke about, oh, he, he'll survive because we want. He sa I said we date if he comes back, and it's a funny scene that they cut out, but you know. Wait, what? I told him that I'd date him if he comes back alive. I mean, <laughs> did Dorsey then jinx? Bomb isn't dead, but they think that he's dead. But like, I, I guess it won't matter in the anime, huh? Because like in the webtoon, if they said stuff, stuff like this and then Bomb returns, not from the dead, but like as a fug slayer, whatever that means. Yo, they could have had this happen. Why? Oh, I, I, I guess we're not going to get an Endorsey date with Bomb, huh? He, he'll survive because we want. He sa I said we date if he comes back. It's a funny scene that they cut out, but you know that's okay. But then when Bomb is found out to be dead, Endorsey is so distraught that she isn't even present at the meeting with everybody. Endorsey should have been the one to cry and scream instead of Rack in episode thirteen. Could you imagine a shrieking, haunting cry from Endorsey like that instead of Rack? I think Rack did a fantastic job, but Endorsey really was that upset, huh? Body. So Nerace and then Pericule didn't give a fuck. Pericule was the only one where it's just like, can we go now? Like, come on, I I got an appointment later. Like, what are we doing here? And everyone's like, bro, come on! It's Bob we're talking. Pericule doesn't give a fuck about Bob. Pericule's the main character of his own story. Points out that Rack and Dorsey aren't there. And it's implied it's because they're so distraught over Bomb's death. We see in Dorsey looking out a window completely crushed i mean completely shattered right dead eyes like bomb was the person who changed her and it, it's so impactful you know it's actually the last time we really see her in season one it's and it's it's crazy right and of course this character development and relationship with bomb plays a role in season two and onwards right it's it's important to her character it's the reason why she changed well that just means that if we're gonna have this happen in uh, season two Mr. Doctor will just simply make a video on how season 2 anime ruined Bombex and Dorsey and I can farm that video too with more cut content! It's, it's fantastic. This is the beautiful thing about being a reaction channel. No matter what, I win. Right? Like, these diehard loyalists, yes, of course, they gotta make, you know, reviews like that and they, they're gonna have their opinions, but it's like... Whether or not something bad or good happens, like, it doesn't fucking matter to me, because I'm just here just farming both sides. If an anime is good, great. We're glazing it, it's having fun. If it's shit, oh, we are fucking farming and roasting it, and we're having fun. And then what does the anime go and do? They fuck it up. They, they pretend like it never happened, and they just wah, kind of wah. erase it. It's, it's really they sad. They dirty, it's, man. It's not fun. The anime completely ruins Bomb and Endorsey. There are no training scenes. Whatever, that's fine. There is no flashback with Bomb and Endorsey talking. Like, okay, I guess that's fine. It's sad. No, it's not fine. Okay, it's not <laughs> okay, good. It's not fine. Okay, the okay, okay. The only reason Endorsey changed was because of the Bomb. bomb. And you could argue yes. that she was changing on her own. But Bomb was the pushing point. He was the... I, I guess, um... My understanding of why Endorsey was changing so much with um, her attitude towards Anak was because of the flashback with Anak. Remember when um, Endorsey and Anak had like a little bit of a fight and there was a cunning moment of, oh, you're coming down with me. And then they fell to the ground and after they broke their legs, they're like on the ground just talking about like sisters, about some shit that they can kind of both relate to. And I thought that was the turning point of why she was more preferential, not preferential, but treated Anak with more empathy later on. So when... And Dorsey inevitably sided with Anak in episode 12, I think, against Ren. It just made sense, but with this cut content information of Bomb being the person there, I guess the enemy was trying to make and Dorsey less of an attachment to Bomb, but more of a... to have that sisterhood kind of shine through rather than having Bomb being the turning point. The tipping point for her, and they pretended like it never happened. That's not okay. When they're discussing the fact that Bomb has died and Pericule just asks about the test results, <laughs> and Dorsey is the one to get like frustrated at him. Did, wasn't Dorsey not frustrated at Pericule? Everyone was a little bit mad at Pericule, right? And it doesn't, it's just kind of weird. She just has like, it's like a comical moment where she's like, stop asking that. And it's like, yeah, she was like, read the fucking room, bro. <laughs> That's kind of why I like Pericule because like, he's just a meme character. He just, 
completely out of it. The bro doesn't give a fuck. He just keeps failing upwards. In the webtoon, you couldn't even, like, speak to anybody. You were so depressed. And now you're just kind of like... It, like, there's a scene where she, you know, they talk about it. And she looks sad. But she's just kind of like, aw. I like... Blame Rachel, bro. The anime didn't have enough time to flesh out and Dorsey as the character that she was in, in the webtoon and decided to use a limited time on Rachel. Blame Rachel for this. A everything? Just blame Rachel. Tim, he was cool. You know, like, Anak has tears in her eyes, but in Dorsey she just did. looks sad. What? In Anak having tears in her eyes was a great moment, too, because, like, just a couple episodes ago, Anak was trying to fucking kill Bomb and take Black March, but now we've come so far and. And when Anak is also smiling too, after she gets like a new hairstyle that looks like her mom's stuff, that was actually so wholesome. This really wouldn't be a big deal if it didn't actually play a role going into the future. Not romantically, not really, you know, but they are shipped, but the relationship, the friendship between Bomb and Endorsey is actually, like, important to the plot. I hate this hairstyle from her, please don't do her like this. It is important with what happens going into season two. I'm not gonna say more than that, obviously, um, but it like it's actually important, you know. Like taking it away ruins a lot that could potentially happen. I don't know if they're going. So I guess we're gonna get more ruined anime moments in the future then. Going to just like pretend like they were good friends, or if they're just going to not really have it be a thing. But in my opinion, it not only sort of messes up the story, but it messes up in Dorsey's character. I've heard a lot of people say in Dorsey's character was sort of messed up in the anime. I feel like they did her justice, but this one thing is the reason why she fell flat for a lot of people. In my opinion, like this is the only thing, if they had changed this, oh my gosh, it would have fixed- Basically the two most important things is, uh, the realization of Bomb's talk about loneliness, helping, you know, Endorsey open up to Anak and side with her against Ren, and then, uh, and Dorsey being so destroyed and distraught after Bomb quote unquote dying and you know being angry at Paracule, but they kind of just didn't do that. Ah, yeah. I mean, now with this information, I guess I'm realizing how much more important End Dorsey really was. But if the anime is willing to do this, doesn't this mean that the content in the future they're really trying to focus on not really on End Dorsey? Like, if these moments are critical setup for season two stuff to happen, then. Either it's just gonna get rushed without any explanation, or just cut it out, right? Fixed so much. I'm not really sure why the creators chose to make this decision. I, I maybe they have a they hate Endorsey. You think like people's like, for example, Classroom of the Elite season one, the main heroine was a blonde girl named K, Karui Zawa K. She was so critical, but all her roles were given to this black haired girl named Horikita Suzune because the director loves Suzune. He was a Susan A. simp. So he made Susan A. to be the main girl character in season one and took away all the important lines from the blonde girl. So like, do you think in Tower of God that <laughs> they did this shit? If they did, then maybe based, I don't know. I still think that it's one of the funniest thing in Class of the Elite that the director did that. He's like, I don't care. I don't give a fuck if there's a season two or not. I am Susan A. Simp. I will make sure she gets the justice that she deserves in my own head. Fuck it. Fuck everyone else. You know what? I, I can honestly respect that decision. Like, the only thing I can think of and what I've discussed with other people is perhaps they wanted to focus on Rachel and Bomb and not endorse and Bomb at all. Ugh. But in my opinion, that doesn't make any sense because the whole point of Rachel is she's jealous of Bomb. Yeah. Right? She's jealous of she wants to be the star. friendships. Yeah. So if you have that Bomb and, and Dorsey friendship, it only further, like, adds to True. that. The whole point of Rachel's existence. He's so right. So in my opinion, it wouldn't have taken away. It would have added to that. I don't know. I just really love that flashback and Dorsey's character arc, you know? The, the theme of loneliness, right? It's so impactful. Lone it's wolf. sort of like one of the main themes of Tower of God, and they basically completely cut it out when it pertains to Endorsey, and that's just- Serena was more flesh than Endorsey, man. <laughs> Straight up! Who would have thought me watching this anime in the beginning, Serena shows up as a mob character that we call a hag, and then we have a Zahad princess showing up, and I'm like, at that moment, what have I ever thought? That Serena will be a better written character than Endorsey? Now, that's a kind of a hot take. Is Serena a better written character than Endorsey? I think she competes. 
You know what? No. Fuck it. I think that Serena had an entire character arc developed and fleshed out and closed. I think Serena deserves it over Anne Dorsey. And Dorsey, yeah, there's a lot of her character that's going to continue the story, but like, it's still building. Serena already had that shit done and packaged and gone in season one. Does that mean Serena is better than Dorsey? No. But if you're talking about like the overall character develop, like the, what those characters portray, the stories, and like how overall flesh they are in this season alone, I think Serena better. Would have never guessed that watching this for the first time, but here we are. Sort of like one of the main themes of Tower of God, and they basically completely cut it out when it pertains to Endorsey, and that's just disappointing. So how can we fix it? Like, how could they have changed it? Um, they, they didn't have to make Ray Endorsey cry for a bomb and have that flashback before siding with Anak. Easy. To have the training sequence, right? There's certain things they could have done. They didn't have to have bomb and Endorsey. Like, I feel like the hide and seek test was fine. They didn't have to change anything there. They don't have to have them training, but at least flash back to a conversation, right? Like something. And don't play it up like Endorsey and Bomb never interacted further and she doesn't really care. Someone higher up in the studios hates Endorsey X Bomb, man. I, I feel like it wouldn't have taken that much. It would have taken a few extra, you know, maybe a minute more in an episode or a few 30 seconds, right? Just something. That they're just add something and it would have added so much so much emotion and i don't know i feel like this is probably one of the biggest flaws of the anime one of the biggest disappointments for me because and it's crazy because i didn't even know i thought it was perfectly fine and that's the beauty of what's called ignorance is bliss if you don't know what you're missing out on how could you be disappointed right well, if the anime was shit, you could just be disappointed. But like, what the anime portrayed was like perfectly fine for me. And it's like, I thought everything was fine, but here we are. <laughs> and Dorsey is a butchered character. Because not only is it a change from the original, which is fine in and of itself, change is okay, but it's a change that actually changes your story and changes your plot, changes your characters. And to me, that's not okay. But what do you guys think? Do you think the anime handled Baum and Dorsey's relationship fine? Uh as a anime only character, yes, but with this added context, probably not. Don't spoil anything in the comments, but do you think season two will be okay uh, when it pertains to this relationship? I'm curious what you guys we'll think. See. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. If you guys want more Tower of God discussion, yes, we I have do. a Discord server. I think we just- Guys, go like Mr. Dr. Bonehead's video. Sub to the channel if you haven't. I hope he makes season two content Man, there could be so much more Tower of God knowledge stuff that we could be farming. I see that he is, you know, doing reactions. Is this him now? Holy shit, he's changed! Bro! He got- He got a lion's mane now? He got a full-on beard? What the- He- Oh my- He looks way better like this too. Holy! Holy- Anyways. I hope that he continues to make more Tower of God content so we can cover it. That's it from me.